I'm Jenny Levitt. I'm a, one of the trustees of the library. You voted for all the trustees, and I will introduce them to you. Uh, our co-treasurers are Betty Schrader and Bill Bayard. Right over here. Over there, Bill. And our secretary is Paul Eldridge with Paul. Thanks for coming, everybody. And we have Lisa Garcia, who's somewhere. Lisa, where are you? And uh, Jonathan James is our other trustee. We also have two alternates. Uh, we have Sarah Johnson in the back, who's very capable. And we have uh, Paula Lanza, who really prepared this whole affair and now couldn't come at the final time. So our program will be. Uh, You'll see uh, on your table you have the surveys, and uh, uh, we'll, we'll go over the statistics for you. And this would, affair was put together because you requested it in your surveys. So this dinner is in, this lunch is in response to your surveys. I know that Jim Hughes, our selectman of past, his services are at 12 o'clock, and some of you may want to go. So we will try to be quick and. Uh, get through as quickly as we can. There will be a slide so presentation. There will be a promotion of the slideshow presentation will have events that happened in 2018. Then there will be a, a presentation of things that we expect to happen in 2019. Uh, there will be an explanation of the warrants, the warrant article that the library will be presenting. Uh, the friends of the library will speak to you, and Jim McFarland will speak about the library fund. And following the presentations, please join us. We have lots of soup for you. And the soups were made by the friends of the library. The trustees will always pitch in, and some of the soups were made by the staff of the library. Uh, this book paper on the table is for you to write. Please make comments or questions. We'll go around and see what you have to say. So we'd appreciate it if you write on the butcher block. And we also want to thank a few other people here. There are people who did the decorations. Pam Cohen, Paula Wenza, Deb Ryan, Kathy Christensen. And there are books on the table for you to take. They are put there by the friends of the library and they are there for you to take. Uh, so if you want them, just walk off and take them. And uh, I think that's all I have to say. So now we have a presentation by Betty Schrader. Okay, we're going to have a brief slideshow. It's about eight minutes. So on your call an infographic with lots of statistics and information from our um, survey. And Betty touched on some of these in her presentation, but 75% of Meredith residents has a library card, and we have over 6,000 registered users. And by comparison, the U.S. averages 68% of the population has a library card. So Meredith, as we know, is above average when it comes to that and everything else. <laughs> um, we circulated over 70,000 items. We had over 48,000 annual visits, and more than 5,000 people attended an event at the library in 2018. <clears throat> 85% of all our circulation is still physical items, such as DVDs and books, and only 15% is electronic, the downloaded books. But our audiobook usage, the downloadable, is, has doubled over the past five years, and the ebooks are only about, have gone about 7% in the same time frame. So the downloadable audiobooks are definitely seeing more popularity than the books on CD. From our 2018 survey, which most of you probably took over the summer, we learned that 90% of those uh, that responded thought the staff were either excellent or good. And 5% of those that didn't think the staff were excellent or good had ever come to the library. So <laughs> <laughs> the top three reasons people don't visit the library more often, parking, shocking, was the number one, but that will really be taken care of. Um, the water we passed last year for us to do the parking behind the library. So within the next year or two, we should see that parking happen. The top uh, number two reason is people are too busy. We're just doing so many things that uh, it's, it's hard for people to get in. And then downtown traffic was 
The top three things people want in the new or renovated library building, energy efficiency is number one, space for the collection, and then a tie for third place was retaining the historical character of the building and access to new technology. Top three services people would like to see us add, craft, hobby, cooking, and repair workshops, opera visits, genealogy, and local history services. And some of the interesting comments that were on there was to add a coffee shop that would be open late, more comfy place to sit, places to sit and read, more quiet spaces, more events for elementary school age children, and more cultural events such as poetry, authors, art, music, and the staff's personal favorite, have a library cat. <laughs> so, in our, coming up in 2019, on your table, there is a, a handout for Love Your Library, which is in February, February's Library Lovers Month. So we have a bunch of fun things coming up. Uh, one of them is that you can send a valentine to your library. So we're going to have valentines set up with names of books that we'd like to have purchased. And if you'd like to purchase that book for the library, you can give us the valentines and the amount of money you need for that book. And we have a library lovers book plate with your name in it that will put in the book or whoever's name you want to put in there. Um, Karen is doing a, it's Take Your Child to the Library Day, which is February 2nd. Mm -hmm. Right, Karen? Um, so from 9 to 2, that's a Saturday, you can bring your child in. And Karen has all sorts of fun things set up, raffles, receive a free book, play with Legos, make a bookmark, have a snack. It's always a party going out there, so if you have kids or grandkids, make sure you bring them in on the second. Karen's also going to be recording kids uh, a couple of days, February 21st and February 28th at 30, to find out why do they love their library, and with parental consent, we will be putting those on our website. She's also doing a busily fun filled February winter read, and sign up has already started that, right Karen? Yes. So you can go into the library, and it's similar to summer reading, it's a bit of a smaller scale, but there's still a, the great hip hop memory shot, where after kids read for a certain amount of time, they can go shopping for things in the store. Raffles, free stuff, and fun. Chris is doing a special computer club, Tuesday, February 12th at 10 a.m., talking about artificial intelligence, everything from toasters to televisions. Um, and find out how AI can help you. And then John's doing Library Lovers Team Karaoke, and that's February 28th at 3.30. Our summer reading theme coming up is um, a universe of stories, and we're trying to do things kind of star-based because it's also the 50th anniversary of the Apollo New Building. So we have um, Galileo Galilei is coming to talk about his latest discoveries using his newly devised spyglass. Hampstead Theater is doing a show on constellations. We're going to do the kickoff party with Mr. Aaron. And Mr. John is doing a stop motion moon landing project made out of Legos. I have no idea, but that sounds like a lot of fun. And of course, all of the usually, I mean, we average 30 events a month, and we do a lot more than that in the summer. So there's going to be something for everyone. And we have our usual monthly events. We do two book groups monthly. We have books on the app. We actually go out to various restaurants and discuss books. Genealogy club, computer club, naughty dinners that meets weekly. We have a talk time reading circle. The Bookworm Lunch, Manga Club, Family Movies, Lego Time, and then all sorts of special events usually tied to the holiday or season that we're in. Keep up to date with what's going on on our website at www.marylibrary.org. We also have a Facebook and an Instagram page where you can sign up for our online newsletter. And if you want, you can put your email address on the butcher paper or any comments on the butcher paper. And I can sign you up for the newsletter on that. The third thing I want to talk about <coughs> is the Warren article. So the library has an article coming up at the next town meeting. And the library building, as most of you know, continues to have issues with life safety code violations, we're not ADA compliant, and a lack of space for programs and collections. This year will be a Warren article at the March 13th town meeting for $400,000 to hire a project architect for the renovated and expanded library design. The town manager has recommended that currently available funds can be used to pay for this expense. The trustees have been working with the Board of Selectmen on the next steps of the process, and at the January 7th Board of Selectmen meeting, two selectmen suggested a process to continue the design work with an exceptional design artist in lieu of an architect request for qualifications, which is the usual town procedure. The library trustees did not ask for this exception, 
or will follow whatever process the select would prefer after they vote at the January 28th meeting. So on Monday, the select are going to vote on how they want us to go forward with the selection process for architect. And however they decide they want us to do it, that's what we do. Um, the article will require a majority vote to hire the architect at the March 13, 2019 meeting, and all libraries and owners are encouraged to attend the meeting. I am now going to turn this over to Mickey Cranehagen, uh, who will be representing the Friends of the Library, just to talk about some of the things they have going on. Mickey? Thank you, Mary. Welcome, everybody. Glad that everybody can make it today. So the Friends of the Meredith Library, if you're not aware, we actually have about 100 members currently. And the purpose is to promote the library involvement in the community and in the library. And one way that we do this is through fundraising, volunteering, sponsoring activities, creating programs of interest to the community, which many of you just saw in the slide presentation. Last year, through all of our efforts, we raised over $20,000. And through that, we have our three book sales, and we also have shelf sales of books, which are at different uh, businesses throughout the state, not just here in Meredith, which we raised about $5,400. Our 5K book it race, which is our largest fundraiser, we raised over $6,000 last year. And we're actually, if any of you are interested, we're looking for some people to take it over, uh, to run it. Um, as of right now, we don't have anybody to uh, head this up next year, or this year. Um, our wrap-up quilt, which was a bookcase, and it was on display in the library. We raised over $1,400 doing that this year. That was a new thing. We have our membership dues, which are very reasonable. And there is a, a trifold display off the, my left, which has uh, photos, and it has some membership forms at the below, below it if you're interested. And our Once Read Bookstore, which unfortunately we are no longer uh, in our physical building. It has been rented out, so we're looking for some space, if anybody knows of anything. We raised over $7,000 in that last year. And because of our efforts, we're able to provide all of these things for the community and our library, such as the summer reading programs, the adult lectures, book discussions, the many programs that we get through the New Hampshire Commun uh, Humanities Council, school outreach, We've been doing this for a few years now, in which every kindergartner at Interlakes goes home with a library book, or a book that the library has helped us purchase. And, uh, you know, to get them involved in learning how to read, and get the parents involved, and get the first library card. We have museum passes to so many places. If you haven't taken advantage of them, please do. I, for one, have two twin grandchildren that are two. When they came up to visit this year, we went up and uh, saw all the wild animals up in Holderness. So you can do it and use it and share it with your family. So thank you very much. Thank you. We'll now hear from Jim McFarland for representing the Meredith Library Fund. Give me a microphone. It's probably one of the most dangerous things that could ever happen. So, I was told that I must uh, be succinct, which for a sales guy is a huge challenge. So I'll do my best. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. We're alive, we're well, it's not snowing. The government is open again, at least temporarily, which you'll see in my slides is important because we have applied last summer for, as the Meredith Library Fund, for our 501c3 nonprofit designation from the IRS, which with the partial government shutdown has uh, not doing a lot. So anyway, it's a happy day from the Meredith Library Fund standpoint that we'll hopefully get our designation letter from the IRS shortly. Okay, so uh, I made the commitment that I would try to head up a truly independent fundraising effort on behalf of the library. And so, um, honoring that commitment, uh, I've recruited a board and so on. Uh, we've been meeting since roughly June every week. 
Here in the content, uh, work on a website, all that good stuff. Okay, so we created a mission, which of course is the first thing we do as an organization, and that is as follows. The mission of the Independent Meredith Library Fund is to obtain tax deductible donations and grants to provide a philanthropic opportunity to help equip, renovate, and expand the Meredith Library, public library, and reduce taxpayers' costs for the project. There you go. So, our board of directors uh, is myself as president. Jamie Laurent is vice president. Jamie, if you'll see it, so we will put a face for the name. Uh, Steve Gear is our treasurer. He's a CPA, lives in Meredith, has a CPA firm in Guilford. Amy Lefebvre is our secretary, super secretary right there. Most many of you know Amy. Jeff Riley is the director at large. Hi, Jeff. Good morning. Uh, Kate Riley Cushiel is uh, our final director at large. And we also, of course, have a liaison to the library, which is uh, Aaron. And Betty Strader is the liaison to the library trustees. Again, we are private Meredith residents. We're not affiliated or connected to the Friends of the Library, the Trustees of the Library, or the Select Board, or anyone else. This is a simply very independent organization. We're going to do our very, very best uh, to raise a lot of money. Next. So, the capital cam campaign information, quite simply, is based on a survey last summer regarding the library and fundraising effort. Uh, we established a goal of 1.125 million. The capital campaign will start February 1st, coming up very quickly. Uh, and again, I'm uh, 501c3 status. I'm happy to report that the government is now open again. Let's hope it stays open for everybody's sake. Um, and again, uh, we have also formed a committee uh, to go off and investigate prioritize government and private foundation grants, which we hope to be a part of that 1.125 million. Uh, so we're pursuing that as well. Um, and again, simply put, the campaign will engage with private individuals, organizations, rotary altruists, et cetera, et cetera, uh, and businesses requesting tax deductible donations and pledges. So you will be able to pledge um, as well as donate up front. It's really your choice from a budgeting standpoint, whatever makes sense for you, okay? And lastly, volunteers needed, okay? So there's a sign-up sheet on the back table next to the exit door. If you have interest in volunteering as an advocate with your neighbors, friends, etc., cetera, uh, grant writers, people who have that experience or background would be tremendously helpful in fundraising. If you can help us fundraise uh, in your neighborhood, your organizations, uh, create a fundraising event, uh, that would be hugely helpful. Uh, and again, we welcome and appreciate your ideas, your input uh, as we move forward. Okay, I can be reached on my cell phone number at 603-393-0863. Don't call me at 2 a.m., the phone's off. Uh, and then my, there's my email address, and as I say, the sign up sheets in the back. Thank you, everybody. And if you have your checkbooks or your wallets, I'll be standing right there next to the door, so you won't be able to leave until you leave me a token of your esteem. Okay. Thanks very much. Uh, someone told me I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Eric Oskowitz, I'm the library director. Sorry about that. Uh, so now we're going to take some questions and answers. Does anyone have any questions about anything that we've just presented? This, there's a lot of statistics here about library use. How does that compare with by the same years? Oh. Um, I'm ready. I can, yeah, I can, Betty worked on the stats and stuff. So, um, the annual number of visitors, uh, there was a slide there that went back eight years, I think it was. And it varies every year because sometimes we have to close for a few days. Like this year, both our circulation and our visitors are down because we were out of commission parts of three months. 
Um, but if you, if you take that out as an outlier, even then, we're almost what we were the year before. Um, they vary. It's always something in the 70, you know, the 57,000, 58,000, 52,000. There, it's not like a trend, you know, it'll be like 54, 57, 53, 58. So it has a lot to do with nature and um, what's going on in our community. Um, so, yes? On that point, I was very surprised uh, with your stats to see that you're averaging 4,000 people a month, 48,000 a year, and a town of 6,300 or so people. It's really quite amazing. I think that in getting the word out about that, it really would be an eye opener for a lot of people. Thank you. Um, and it is true that every year we do have more card holders. I think Aaron touched on that. But the non resident portion is still small. That's the percent of people who pay taxes in Meredith that have library cards. That doesn't even include, that would be like even a higher number, including all the non residents that use our library which is still a small percentage, but there. Any other general questions? Any soup? Okay, so that smell of the soup is calling all of us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you have a plan?